Okay, so first of all, we're going to search for data wrapper and then go to the data wrapper website. And then scroll down and click on maps. And then scroll down again and select the chloropleth map. And then we'll create a map. The first step is to select the map. So if we search for hex, then all of the maps that are made out of hexagons will appear. And there are a bunch of different options. We can also search for squares. And there's a few different options for countries that are made out of squares. And then we can search for circles as well. And there's some countries that are made out of circles. And then we can also search for tile. And that will bring up some of the options that we've already seen. Now I am going to search for squares again. And then select the map that I want, which is world population squares. So each country on this map is a square, and then the size of the square represents the population of that country. Now we'll proceed. And the next step is to add in your data. So I am going to copy this from an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll start by just copying the country names and the numbers and then paste them in here and send them to the table. And it tries to match up all of the countries with the country names, but in some cases it can't do that and so it throws up a bunch of errors. So for example, Bahamas needs to be changed to the Bahamas. This is easier if you have the iOS codes for the countries, so now I will copy all three columns and paste them and send them to the table again. And this time it does a much better job of matching up everything based on the iOS code. And now I have just three errors. There are still going to be some countries it can't find. So for example, here it can't find Andorra. Now I will go proceed and this takes us to the match tab and it's already automatically figured out that I want to match the iOS code to the first column, column A, and that the values are in column C. Then we'll proceed again and it takes us to the check tab and here we can see the three countries that it can't find, so Andorra and Liechtenstein and Vatican City. Now I'm just going to ignore this and proceed. And now we get to the actual visualization step. So I can select a palette. And now the colors of the countries represent the life expectancy. We can customize this a bit. So for example, I can reverse the color scale. And I can change this from continuous to steps. And then when it comes to steps, there's a few different ways this can be calculated. So I will change it to rounded values. Then for the legend, I will go to show advanced options and increase the size of the legend. And then we'll click proceed again. And now this takes us to the annotate tab. So this is where we put in all of the text. So I will give this a title and put in a description and then add in a note at the bottom. Then I'll put in the data source and copy the link for the place where I got this data from and then add in a byline. So I'll just put my name in here. Then we can customize the tool tips. So this is what appears when you hover over each of the countries. So I will change this from the iOS code to the country name and then add years after this. 
So now when I hover over one of the countries, I see the country name and the number followed by the word years. Then we can add in some text annotations. So I'll just click here. And then I want to add an annotation for the country with the shortest life expectancy. Then I'll decrease the size of the font. And we need to move the arrowhead first so it's pointing at the correct country. And then move the annotation. Then I'll resize this box and change the arrow so that it is curved. Now, if you want to format just part of this text, you can't do it like this because that will just make everything bold. What you need to do is put this in front of the country name and then this after the country name. And then we have just the country name in bold. And then I will just hover over this to double check that I have got it right. And now we can scroll down and proceed. This takes us to the layout tab, but there's nothing here that I want to change. So I will just go to the final step, which is publish and embed. Now this is the part where you actually need to have created a free account. If not, you will not be able to publish it. And once you have published it, you get a link that you can use to embed it in a website. And you can also export it as a PNG file. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to create a world map with squares using data wrapper. And that is everything.